Um, this is Dr. Keith Schubert, and I'm going to record a thing explaining how to do excitation table design with JK flip-flops. I'm going to pick up from the example that I had done previously. You can see on the upper part of my screen here that I have a um, the uh, tables for the D flip-flop design. So we did the D flip-flop design, if you remember, and we showed that uh, this one we could encircle the upper tube, and that made an XOR pattern. All right, so um, basically, I, I'm going to start from these Carnot maps from our uh, D table design, and we're going to show how we get the JKs. Now, the easiest way to fill out the JKs is actually to start from these tables, um, the D tables. Um, you can do it directly also. But there's a lot of shortcuts when it's already in this format. So let me start by taking a look on the right hand side. You'll see the excitation table for the JK. It's the upper one of these. And you'll see um, we've got the current state, which is QT. All right, so the current state is the same right now for us in our design as this S0 and S1. The next state, NS0, is the values that are inside and that is the second column so if you notice on here right when my current state is a zero the uh, k value is an x and when the current state is a one the j value is an x and that's the first aspect we're going to deal with now we're going to be dealing with um, the state for S0 first because we're going to do next state 0 so state 0 is the one that matters to us um, thus what we're going to care about is when is the current state S0 equal to 0 because that will be K is equal to X well if we look state 0 on the Carnot map for my next state 0 K map um, so state zero is on the outside, right? So if you look, the first column and the very last column of our Carnot map is when state zero is a zero. So when the current state is a zero, the K map gets X's there. So I just put X's on the outside. Right? When the current state is a one, J will become X's. So we go to the J table, Next, state 0 for J. We make a card no map for it as well because it's a separate input. And we go to the state we're working on. That is currently state 0. And we put X's when state 0 is 1, which is the middle two columns. So that shows you what the pattern looks like. So I can, that's pretty easy to do. I can do these just looking at the outside. It's the same for every design where those X's are going to be. It's based off of the position inside the map. Um, now, once I look, so that deals with the previous state. When I look at the next state, the one that I'm going to, that's the values inside the maps here. Um, you'll notice when the next state is a zero, J is a zero for the zero parts. We're gonna do the zero parts first. When the next state is zero, um, J is zero. When the next state is one, J is one. That's kind of nice. The whatever is in the next state map will stay the same for J. If you notice when it's a one, the next state zero or one for K flips. It becomes one or zero. So we can look at the next state. That's what's here. The values inside. So when the current state is a zero. That's the outside. That's the one that gave us the uh, K maps or X's, but they're unlabeled at, you know, as far as X's are concerned. So I do my X's first. Um, so all I have to do is to copy them: zero one, zero one, one zero, one zero. That finishes up the map. You just copy those. The middle terms here. This is what's going to go to K, but remember K, the value that's inside the map gets flipped to become K. 
So I've got the ones on this, on the off diagonal, and on the main diagonal, I've got zeros. So it'll flip. It'll become ones and zeros on this off. When I come down here, see ones, zeros. I can just take that pattern, invert it, and copy it right into the case. And you're done. After that, it's just a regular Carnot map. So I do the encirclements. I kind of colored them red here. Um, and you can see that is our same exclusive war pattern we had before. So I just wrote that down. Um, this one is the inverse of that XOR pattern. So I just took that XOR pattern and inverted it. That inverse on the um, output, since it's an XOR, I could also invert one of the inputs, but I just left it here because then that gives me the option to handle however I want. In programming, it's often easier to just do one and then invert it anyway. So um, that's a pretty straightforward one. Now, there wasn't a huge savings on this first one because when you deal with, um, you know, something that already has a pretty nice map, like, I mean, honestly, this one having just an X horse, a thing is a really nice map. That makes life very easy. You, you shouldn't expect to get a big improvement on those. You get better improvements if you remember this one was like really awkward. The next state for one and all those little crazy things. That's where we expect to get a big savings. So when things are kind of ugly, like this one was, right, we have to do three different encirclements and a weird pattern to be able to get next state for one, that's going to be a big savings. So since I'm going to do next state for one, state one is now the state I'm dealing with. Out of state one, go to next state one. So that's my QT, QT plus one. So I make up the tables for that. And remember, whenever my um, current state, which is state one now, is a zero, the Ks will be Xs. So I go here, state one is my current thing. Whenever it is zero, that's these four right values. Those are all Xs on the K table. So this one right here is the K table. So we have Xs there. Whenever right, my the state I care about, in this case, state one is a one, J will have Xs. So state one, and then all these here on the J table are all Xs. That's just simply using the chart, right? So you put the Xs in first. You'll notice they're always, half of them are Xs between the two. And they're always the inverse map, and they should line up with whatever state you're dealing with. The J's underneath the state are all X's, the K's on the flip of that map. Okay. Now, if you remember, we said um, under the, when well, the current state is zero, and it's over here, for the J map, the J map looks exactly like the current state of the system. So if we look, our current state, next state one in a D is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. You just copy it. When it's under the 1, the K is the one that has a value. So under next state 1, K on the K map. Right? So 0, 1 flips to become 1, 0. So I just take what's here. I see 1, 1. One zero, so it's going to become zero 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 one. So I just took this four bit pattern, I copied it down here, flipped, done. All right, and then I encircle, and now here my best encirclement is on the outside. But now I only have one. All of K requires one AND gate, and all of J, boom! I have a single encirclement here. That makes life a lot easier. So you see that it's a lot, a lot better of a design, a cleaner design, by having um, this all taken care of using the uh, the JKs. So we didn't get any real improvement on the S0 next state, but we got a huge improvement on the S1 from this big, ugly, multi-layered 
you know, complex statement to these two very clean, simple statements. Okay. Um, so that gives us a, a much, much nicer, better design. All right, so that is uh, what we need for the, the designs. We have our answers for each. You could directly implement them. Um, I will do another one where I show um, how to put this into code. But now you at least have the design. You could build that as a circuit if you want, or we'll do a, uh, a simple design of JK flip-flops on, uh, online. So um, hope that helps, and I will talk to you all soon.